Hello, and welcome to the Turk Family Fundamentals webinar series. My name is Danielle Walker. I use she or pronouns, and I'm the Assistant Director in the Office of Family Engagement here at the University of Maryland. Uh, for those of you that are new, this webinar series is intended to help you become informed consultants on campus resources so that you can better support your Turks. Uh, today, we're joined by staff in the Department of Resident Life. They will be discussing everything you need to know about fall move-in, uh, the many resources available for you as Turk family members, as well as you as Turks that are on the call tonight, um, and really just how you all can support each other in making move in a successful experience for you all. Uh, if you do have questions, please feel free to submit those via the Q&A feature. Uh, to access the Q&A feature, find the two conversation bubbles towards the bottom of your screen. Uh, it should say Q&A. Uh, if you don't see that, you may need to click the three dots to the right uh, to expand your toolbar. Uh, to help us answer the questions that the majority of you have, uh, I ask that you use the upvote option. Uh, so if you see a question that you would also like the answer to, instead of typing that same question, uh, just select the thumbs up icon. This is what's called an upvote, uh, and we'll be prioritizing the questions with the most uh, upvotes. Also, be sure to look at the answered tab as well for um, questions that have maybe already been uh, asked and responded to. Uh, we will do our best to respond to as many questions as we can before the end of the webinar. Uh, I anticipate we will reach 500 at least by the time folks start stop coming in. Um, so there are a lot of you all in the room. Uh, so we will do our best. Uh, lastly, this webinar is going to be recorded. Well, it's currently being recorded now, um, and it'll be available on the Turk Family YouTube channel tomorrow. Uh, and I will also be sending uh, an email to you all with uh, links and uh, where to find this recording as well. Uh, you can also refer to your confirmation or reminder email um, for a link to the YouTube channel. So with that, I will hand over this presentation to my colleagues in Resident Life. Thank you all for being here. Thank you, Danny. Hello and welcome uh, to the Arrival Preparedness Webinar. Uh, my name is Kia Whedon and I am the Interim Assistant to the Director here at the Department of Resident Life and I use she, her pronouns. I have a couple of other colleagues who are gonna introduce themselves as well. We're gonna start with Erin. Good evening, everyone. My name is Erin Schlegel. I'm one of the assistant directors with the Department of Resident Life. I use she, her pronouns, and I'm very excited to be here. Thanks, Erin. Dan. Good evening, everyone. I'm Dan Harefield. I use he, him pronouns. I am the program manager for residential and community engagement with the Department of Resident Life, and I'm, very, I'm happy to be here with you all tonight. Thanks, Dan. To kick us off, I'm now going to ask our director, Dennis Passarella George, to get us going um, with our presentation. Dennis. Kia, yeah, thank you. Good evening, everyone. My name is Dennis Passarella George. I use he, him, his pronouns. I serve as the director of Resident Life. Uh, as a director for the Department of Resident Life and a proud Maryland alum, I just want to say thank you to all of you for being here this evening. I also want to welcome you to our Terrapin community. We've got a lot to share tonight, and I want you to know our teams in the Department of Resident Life, residential facilities, and across our entire division of student affairs have been busy all summer preparing for new students to arrive in just a few weeks, and we can't wait for everyone to get here. For tonight, our team is going to share information about things like room assignments, roommates, safety in the residence halls, and lots of information about how to prepare for move-in day. Before we get started, I want to share just a bit of information about the Maryland residential experience. Dan, can you go to the next slide for me? We want every person who lives with us to know that the residence halls are going to be their home away from home while they're here on campus. And next slide for me, Dan. Thank you. What we know as the Maryland residential experience is a once in a lifetime opportunity. Living on campus helps our students transition to college, will help them make connections, form lots of friendships, and they're gonna have a ton of support available from our staff 24 seven. For every Maryland student to get the best support possible, we want undergraduates to live here with us for their first year, 
We want them to stay in the residence halls for the second year. And as upper division students, we have lots of options as they navigate more independent living on campus and in the greater College Park area. Our range of housing options for students. We have eight residential communities and 39 on-campus residence halls. We also have seven uh, affiliated apartment communities at South Campus Commons and the courtyards, which are on-campus land and are managed by our partners at Capstone On-Campus Management. For our time this evening tonight, we have designed this evening to share lots of information about our program and help you and your TERP be ready for move-in day. So enough from me. We got a ton of stuff to cover tonight. Let's dive right in and get to our presentation. Thank you again for being here and go Terps. Thank you, Dennis. So as you prepare for moving, it's important to know exactly where you're gonna move into. So uh, as you may recall, our room assignment information was released last month. It included information about your students' housing details. It included their hall, their room, as well as their room type. It also included roommate information and how your student can contact their roommate um, as you prepare for move-in. Our assignments uh, information also included um, your student's specific move-in arrival window and instructions. And we'll talk about that a little bit later. In order for your student to view all of this room information, they can go to their housing portal. And as you see on the slide, they can get to that information by using their directory ID and their password. Wanted to additionally let you know that if a student has been approved for an early arrival, which would be before August 24th, that updated information would also be found in their housing portal. We'd like to remind folks about the factors of placement just so that we are transparent about our process. And it includes a variety of factors, which um, placement could include uh, information about living learning program participation, any um, special needs and accommodations. Placement also, um, some factors might include roommate requests, living style preferences. Um, we do that to try our best to do a, a good match for where your student will um, live. And finally, if you have questions, or if, you, uh, if your student needs to reach out about anything, our assignments office is always here to help. And you can find their information here on the slide, both the email and our um, phone number. So now that we've talked about you know, where exactly the room is, let's talk a little bit about you know, what you'll find in the room. Each room has a standard furniture package for each student. And that package is a desk, dresser, bed, obviously the mattress on the bed, and some closet space. Students also have access to wired and wireless internet and the ability to uh, stream the Xfinity on campus option. You can see on the slide some examples of our furnished and decorated um, rooms, but we have more examples of those various room types on our website. And they include, it includes lots of resources um, to get a sense of the different styles, the layouts, as well as the amenities that many of our buildings in our communities include. Um, I'd like to highlight the virtual layouts and 360 tours. So that can definitely help you get a sense of the layout and what you might be, um, what you'll expect once you get to the room. And if you find that you don't have you don't have a 360 for your specific um, room or specific building, there's often a comparable 360 tour room um, that is within that community. So knowing your room assignment, having a sense of the layout is good. That natural next step is likely that you want to figure out how to transfer them, transform that room and make it feel like um, their space, your student's space. And we definitely encourage personalizing the space. But we also want to remind you to keep a few things in mind as your student plans to move into the residence hall to, come, to create that home away from home feel. Since the room is a shared space, uh, it'll be important um, to not only think about with your student what it means to share a space with another person, if that's not what they're used to, but also encouraging um, some discussion around um, what your student 
and their roommate will bring to coordinate and collaborate in the room. So this usually includes thinking about um, not only um, thinking about what your student actually needs as opposed to bringing everything they own to the room. So we often give the example of, you know, you're moving in in August and, you know, the weather is a little warmer, is a little, is a little warm. And so perhaps leaving those clothes that might be used for later in the fall when it gets a little cooler, we could probably leave those items um, home for now and maybe think about bringing those items during family weekend or later in the fall or around Thanksgiving. So again, when moving in and thinking about personalized space and the things you want to bring, don't necessarily need to bring everything, but certainly think about what your student actually needs. And as you and your student are thinking about settling in, you'll, you'll notice when you move in that the setup is a pretty standard layout. So again, and think about personalizing, you're more than welcome to move the furniture as needed, but we do ask you to um, avoid blocking any of our air control systems. And that's the systems that provide heat, air, and dehumidification. Let's also talk about shipping items. We ask that um, items are not shipped before our students move in. We instead ask to plan for any packages or deliveries to be shipped after the student um, has arrived and has checked into their residence hall room. Shipping items early could prevent a delay in their ability to be sorted um, and therefore a little delay to get to your student once they arrive. So again, please plan to ship any packages after the student has arrived and is checked in. Um, as far as thinking about what items to bring and what items not to bring, uh, I want to highlight the website that you see on this slide and should suggest that you go there to see the helpful list of items um, to bring and not to bring. So as I mentioned, um, this is going to be a shared space for many of our students. Uh, we know that having a roommate is a new experience. So we encourage um, students to reach out before move-in day and to start to develop that roommate relationship. The best advice that we would give is to remember that the best way to be a good roommate, to be a good roommate, or to have a good roommate is to be a good roommate. These relationships are reciprocal. And as I said, not everyone has had experience sharing a space with someone. So it's important to communicate. It cannot be overstated. Communication is key. And each student has to invest in that roommate relationship to make it work. We have many stories of wonderful, wonderful roommates who did not know each other before moving in, but became the best of friends because they exhibited care and they connected well as roommates. So students should go into this roommate relationship with an open mind and willingness to, com to compromise and talk about interests and concerns. And even when students may know who their roommate is, perhaps it's someone from high school or a childhood friend. Um, they likely haven't shared a living space. And so there will be an adjustment. And so again, that communication is key. We will provide a number of opportunities to help build that relationship once students arrive. For example, we'll have meet and greets uh, with their, they'll have meet and greets with their RAs when they get going. We have fall welcome activities, which we'll discuss later. And our staff will work with them to have conversations about our, com our community living agreement. In those agreements, um, that helps roommates discuss uh, very important things uh, around the living elements and the preferences um, to help foster a more comfortable living arrangement. Throughout all of this and working through the roommate relationship, our staff is here to help. So if there are problems or disagreements or things like that arise, arise, our students should know that their RA is a resource who can help them mediate and resolve conflict. Now I'm gonna turn it over to Erin, who's gonna to talk to us about safety in our residence hall. Thanks, Kia. Hi, everyone. My name is Erin, and I'm here to talk about safety and a few other important move-in tips. Um, so in our residence halls, we provide um, secure entrances to all of our buildings. So in order to access the building, a student needs their university ID card to swipe inside. 
we like to describe it as our triple barrier system because you need to swipe to get into the building. And then if your building has an elevator, you need to swipe to call the elevator. And then you need to swipe once inside the elevator to select your floor. If you're taking the stairwells, again, you need to swipe to access the stairwells. And then the third part of that barrier is your room key. So all of our students have a key to their room. Uh, we also offer call boxes outside of our buildings. If a student needs to get a hold of someone or contact the service desk for assistance, they're welcome to do that. And most importantly, we have our 24-7 service desks. So all of our residents are assigned to a service desk, and that is staffed 24-7 when our buildings are occupied. Um, they are staffed by our community assistants and at that location, students can pick up a key or a temporary ID card if they lock themselves out of their space. That is where the student will pick up their packages or where they could go if they ever need assistance or are having a problem. Our community assistants are trained to help and get the right folks involved to assist your student. And then lastly, we also have our on-call staff. We have our resident assistants who are on duty in the evening hours and make regular rounds of the community. And we also have multiple levels of professional staff coverage on call, 365. So we are here to support your student and make sure our residence halls are a safe place for them to live. Okay. You can move ahead. All right, and this is also a shared responsibility. So while our residence halls are safe and we have our staff um, to support our students, we expect that our students are locking their room doors and that they're carrying their keys and their IDs with them at all times. We're also asking that they be mindful of their impact on the community um, and what that means um, when they are living with us in the residence halls. Um, we also ask that students are responsible for their guests. It's one of our residence hall rules. Um, and so anyone who your student invites into the residence halls, your student is responsible for their behavior. So that is very important to know. And we are here to help. So if a student is concerned, if something doesn't feel right, they're experiencing a problem, we are here to help. Um, they can go to their service desk and we are at the ready to provide support. All right, so let's transition to the big day, fall move-in. All right, so the next couple of slides, we will talk through how students get checked into their residence hall and moved into the residence hall. All right, so our main two move-in days are Thursday, August 24th, and Friday, August 25th. When your student received their assignment in roommate information via the portal on July 20th, they also received their arrival passport. Please make sure that you review that arrival passport with your student because it provides critical information for move-in day. Um, that passport explicitly lists their move-in date and time. And so if that time says 11 a.m. on Thursday, we ask that you honor that as closely as possible and that you don't arrive at 10 a.m. or 1 p.m. Our move-in process was very closely coordinated to account for um, the many construction projects throughout campus, traffic, and the volume of students moving into each of our communities on their respective days. We have over 5,000 students who will move in on these two days. And so we ask that you honor your move-in time to provide you the very best experience possible. Next, it's important that you think about your uh, move-in dream team, as we like to call it. And that dream team consists of ideally three people, your student, the driver, and the helper. Um, and so, uh, once you follow the information on your passport, it will also include your arrival point onto campus. And we ask that you honor that as well, um, because there will be many roads that will become one way. Um, so you might think, oh, I know the best way to get to my building, um, but it might not be the best way on move-in day because that particular route might be closed to you. So please follow the instructions on that passport. And then once you arrive to your unloading zone, um, your student will 
um, exit your vehicle and go to their service desk to get their room key. While the student is getting their room key, the driver and the helper will unload the vehicle entirely at the unloading zone, typically curbside. And we ask that you do that within 10 minutes and that you do not leave your vehicle unattended. And that is because we wanna get as many families as close to the building as possible um, for the shortest amount of time possible to make move-in as easy as possible for, for all troops and their families. Um, so once the vehicle is unloaded curbside, uh, the driver will move the vehicle to their long-term parking uh, location, and there will be signage and support curbside to um, provide support if you have any questions about that or concerns getting back to your long-term uh, parking location. Um, and then once the student gets their key, they'll come back to the items where the helper will be, and then uh, the driver will meet back at that location, and then you can begin moving things to your residence hall space. All right, so um, as you know, we are moving in over 5,000 students coming to campus over these two days. So please plan um, accordingly. All right. All right, so let's plan for the big day. Um, we wanna make sure that um, like Kia mentioned before, that you're not bringing your child's entire bedroom, right? That you're really packing what you need um, because this is a shared space. We want to make sure there's there's space for all the occupants of the room. Um, there will be lots of staff on the ready to help you as soon as you arrive. There will be um, volunteers and the University of Maryland Police Department curbside to help direct traffic and welcome uh, Terps. Our student staff, our RAs, and our professional staff will be available to answer questions and help direct you along the way. We will also have um, a small number of move-in cards to assist you with move-in, but please know that there is a small number and there's many of you. So um, please don't rely on one of our carts. It is best if you bring your own hand truck or dolly um, so that you can get in and out of the buildings um, as easily as possible and to expedite that process. Um, please also double check the approved and not approved list of items on our website uh, so that you're not bringing anything that could um, cause a safety issue in our residence halls. We also ask that you bring your own water bottle and that you bring the best positive attitude you can that day. Move in is a beautiful, wonderful day. And it also can be really stressful when you're um, leaving your student um, for the first time in our residence halls. Um, so again, we are here to support them. You're not alone in this. Um, and, and we can't wait to see you. All right. We also have um, a couple of different rental options for your student. Um, so that includes um, myfridgerental.com, which um, is a mini fridge and micro fridge available for rental. Um, and those can be reserved and delivered to your student space prior to move-in. We also work with a company called bedloft.com um, if you're interested in a lofting kit to raise your student's um, bed off the floor to allow for um, more floor space. All right, and again, we are here to help. So please don't hesitate to reach out with any questions on your move-in day. And now I will turn things over to Dan to talk about our fall welcome program. All right, thank you, Erin. Um, so you've moved in. You've had a, a long day. You've been out in the heat for a little bit. You've taken some time to set up the room. Maybe you grab some lunch. Uh, maybe you head over to the student union, stop by the bookstore, get some Maryland swag, uh, run out to the store real quick, maybe get those last couple items that you didn't pack in the car on your way over. At some point, though, um, there's going to have to be that moment where you say how proud you are of your student, uh, you wish them well, and you send them on their way to start exploring the campus and getting uh, integrated into this uh, campus community here. We promise we've got everything covered at that point. That's what Fall Welcome is about. It's an opportunity for us to introduce students to the campus, to help them get connected to resources, to each other, understand what's involved in this College Park community here, um, and get excited 
um, get, get really energized about starting their Terrapin journey. So we have a whole host of different activities that are gonna be taking place over the course of the extended weekend. Um, technically, uh, we, we really start on Thursday with the, with the move-in and we have a, a activities every evening um, on uh, Thursday, Friday, and then into the weekend for the full days on Saturday and Sunday. So there are activities for students to really explore what's happening here at Maryland. Some of the big ones to highlight for them are uh, the new student welcome. On the Friday um, after move-in, uh, students will get together with their RA, they'll have some meet and greets, uh, they'll start to get to know some of the other students on the floor, and then together as a community, they'll head over to McKeldin Mall, where they'll get a barbecue style dinner provided by our dining services, uh, they'll get some towels uh, provided by a division of student affairs uh, branded with the Stamp Student Union and Terps After Dark, which I'll talk a little bit about later, um, where they'll be able to sit in community with each other, um, start to build some new friendships, and get a welcome address by some of our campus leadership, including our uh, president, uh, Dr. Pines, um, the VP for uh, Student Affairs, uh, Dr. Perillo, and we'll have uh, a student speaker or two uh, to engage the crowd and welcome uh, everyone officially to the campus. So a great way to start meeting some new people and feeling like you're part of this big community. The next big event um, to highlight on our schedule is on Saturday. Um, we have a uh, essentially a community resource festival called Free Fest, um, and we'll bring in a whole bunch of different resources from the campus, departments and organizations. We have some off-campus businesses uh, that are coming uh, over here to highlight uh, either you know shops or restaurants or just resources that are available to students uh, both on and off campus. So it'll also be out here on the Keldon Mall. Um, the image on the screen is actually from our previous New Student Welcome. Both the New Student Welcome and Free Fest will be taking place in the same general area. Um, but the, the Free Fest event will have all of those resources and giveaways and prizes, uh, a DJ, a photo booth, inflatables, it'll be a whole festival style experience for our students. And then on Saturday evening, we introduce them to uh, Terp Spirit. And we bring everybody over to Maryland Stadium, uh, CQ Stadium up on the north side of our campus uh, and introduce them to our athletics program. Uh, they get to meet the football team and some leadership within athletics. But really the big part of that event is starting to really feel like a Terp where they're gonna learn the cheers and, and uh, songs and dances that are involved in so many of our athletic events, um, start to learn some of the traditions that are both built into athletics and generally here at the university, and then culminate all of that into a class photo on the field in, on, uh, at the stadium. So it'll be in the shape of the Maryland M, we'll uh, take the photo and then we'll make that available digitally um, after the event. So it's a great way to kind of put a stamp on the start of the experience here at Maryland. Um, but that's not all. Like we have, those are three of our big programs, but we're gonna have yoga and game nights and trivia and uh, arts and crafts, uh, Pilates. We're gonna have affinity group welcomes. We're gonna have a concert over in the Stamp Student Union on Saturday night. Uh, there are gonna be all sorts of different activities to help students really get a sense of what there is to do here at Maryland, how we're here to support them during their time as students, and then get excited about starting the, the academic year here. So a lot to check out. We do have a snapshot of our schedule currently available on our website. If you go to the link that's on the uh, address that's on the bottom of the screen right now, um, you can see a snapshot of everything that's taking place. Um, we will have uh, additional event descriptions popping up on the website here shortly. Uh, but we've got a full slate of events for them over the course of those four days, over 30 events for students to be able to check out. Some of them that they'll be directly guided to by their resident assistants and others that they'll be able to explore on their own. So there'll be a, a lot of great ways to get connected. Just to highlight a, a couple quick things about important dates. These are the big things that we've been talking about here during this presentation. Move in is uh, the main, at least the main days for this are the 24th and the 25th. Um, and then fall welcome extends through that weekend, uh, through the 27th, classes officially beginning on August 28th. So um, it's, a, it's a fast weekend, it's an exciting weekend, it's an energetic weekend, and we dive right into the start of the semester. Uh, so if you want to stay on top of all of our dates, uh, the full schedule of events throughout the year, 
uh, kind of get a sense of, of what is important as far as housing goes, you can check out that link that's on the bottom of the screen now um, our, at our main site, terp housing slash dates. And then the last thing I want to highlight before we transition into taking some questions here is about continuing to stay connected on campus. One of the things that um, I do a lot of orientation presentations that I, I hear from families is concern about, well, what does my student do once they're there? Well, I promise you, there are tons of things for students to get involved in once they're here. Um, you know, first of all, when they first move in, they're going to learn about their residence hall association, hall and area councils. Uh, so every building for the high rises, for the larger buildings, and every cluster of smaller buildings has its own hall or area council. And students can dive right in. If they were involved in high school, this is a great way to start their involvement experience once they're here uh, for their first year of college. So they can run for a position in their first semester, really in the first couple of weeks, they'll see more information uh, promoted about RHA uh, when they arrive here on campus. Beyond that, we have the first look fair that happens at the beginning of September, and there are over 800 student organizations here at Maryland. There is everything uh, from sports and athletic clubs uh, to gaming clubs to uh, cultural uh, clubs to our fraternities and sororities. Uh, there's a squirrel watching club of all things. Uh, so there is so much for students to get involved in if there's something that they they'd love to do, but they don't see it in the list of clubs, they can create it. Um, and we have this first look fair as a way for students to see all of the options that are available to them um, early on in their time here so they can start making those connections, try a couple things out, maybe something that's new that they never thought they'd be interested in, um, and then see if maybe that sticks and that's something that they want to continue moving forward with. Um, additionally, uh, the Division Student Affairs, um, our Athletics Department, the Clarice uh, Performing Arts Center, um, a bunch of different campus organizations come together to put together a series of events called Terps After Dark on Thursday, Friday, and Saturday nights for the first six weeks of the semester to really help students continue to build friendships and get integrated into the campus community. So there are going to be all sorts of different activities that take place there. Um, more of that information will be emailed out to students on a regular basis so that they can see what's uh, upcoming for the various events hosted throughout those first six weeks. Beyond that, Student Entertainment Events is a uh, student organization that hosts concerts, special lectures, uh, and presentations, comedians, uh, all sorts of really cool activities that uh, mostly take place over in our STAM Student Union, but also at other venues across our campus. So um, again, another series of events for students to be aware of. And then homecoming is continuing to become bigger and bigger every year with all sorts of exciting opportunities to get uh, excited and build that Maryland pride, um, including our own food truck festival that we, we host uh, as the Department of Resident Life. So uh, there is so much to do here at Maryland. If students go to uh, the Terp Link website, um, they'll be able to uh, register uh, they'll be able to see all of the various campus organizations, student organizations that they can be a part of, see the schedule of events that are taking place from all those organizations, uh, and stay connected to all of the opportunities here at Maryland. If they haven't uh, explored those options, you can always push them in that direction, and they will find something that, that really hits their niche. So there's always something to do here at Maryland. With that, that is our main presentation. We know that there are gonna be a bunch of questions. We, I can see the Q&A uh, little ticker there at the top with some questions for us to be able to answer on stream here. So I'm going to invite Danny back uh, to help moderate our Q&A here uh, for the rest of our session this evening. Thank you, Dan. Um, yes, yeah, so we have tons of questions in the Q&A tonight. Um, there were some questions I do want to um, go ahead and answer off the bat. Um, and so one of them is the text from the chat. Um, folks are having a hard time copying that. Uh, I will uh, copy that and include it in the email that I share with everyone tomorrow. Um, that will have uh, all of the resources that were provided um, where you can find the recording as well as all of these links that have been shared. So uh, that will be in that email that you received tomorrow. Um, and then there was also a question at the very beginning 
um, regarding an app for students to learn about campus events, safety alerts, bus schedule, weather alerts, that kind of thing. Um, so we do have a University of Maryland app. Uh, it has actually been uh, undergoing revisions and improvements, uh, and it should be available for students in the fall. Um, I am not certain if it will also include um, safety alerts and weather alerts, uh, but you will be able to find uh, campus events through this app. It's just the UMD app through um, whatever app store you have on your phone. Um, and so that is just UMD app. Uh, the safety alerts and the weather alerts that the university will send out, uh, all students are automatically enrolled in what are referred to as the UMD alerts. Uh, and you can go on to the UMD alerts website. If you just go to Google, you can type in UMD alert. Um, it'll take you to a, a web page where uh, students can access their account. Um, each account is allowed uh, one email address and two phone numbers. Um, and so uh, we encourage students to list their email address and phone number, and then they can list the phone number of uh, a, a family member. Um, that is how the university will send out any alerts that students need to be aware of. Um, and then for family members, uh, if there are more of you that wish to receive alerts or be notified of what's going on on campus, um, the University of Maryland Police Department, UMPD, uh, they are active on social media. So Twitter, um, they have uh, their website. Uh, and so you can uh, follow their accounts to receive their alerts that way as well. Um, for bus schedules, there is a transit app um, on the Department of Transportation Services website. Uh, it provides information about that, but it is uh, referred, it's called the transit app, um, and that will allow students to see live um, bus schedules, where the buses are, and all of that kind of information. So uh, that, uh, those are some of the apps. Um, in the fall, once the UMD app is fully uh, unveiled, um, some of these may all be in the same place, but uh, the last time I had um, a meeting with someone about it. I don't believe they were all included, uh, but that could have been some feedback that they've received and maybe have been able to uh, to implement. But uh, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, start some of the questions. Again, if you do have any questions, please put them in the Q and A. That's how we're pulling all of our questions. Um, the first one is: uh, Can you share about the roommate reassignment process? Yeah, uh, so I can jump in on this one. Um, so for the first couple weeks of the semester, we actually go into a room freeze. Um, one thing to note is that we are very full this fall. Um, so we had a, a very uh, sizable first year class uh, that got admitted to the university. They're all excited about living here on campus. Um, so our residence hall, halls are full. So we go through a room freeze for the first couple weeks just to be able to go through a verification process, make sure that everyone who is scheduled to move in moves in. Um, and then starting the third week of the semester, um, our assignments office uh, opens up a reassignment process where students are able to go into our room exchange system in the housing portal, um, and they can do a couple different things. They'll be able to uh, view potential open spaces on campus, if there is a direct one-to-one -one swap that students might be interested in, there's, a, there's an option for them to explore that. Um, or if they have an open space in their room to potentially pull in a, a roommate to fill that space, um, you know, if, if they're interested in having a specific person be their roommate um, once they get to that point. So there'll be a few different options that are available to students. It's all built into our housing portal. And our assignments office is always here to help. So if students have questions, they can certainly reach out uh, contact our assignments office, and they'll help walk them through the details and the process of going through the room exchange system. None of that starts until that third week of the semester, and it runs through until the end of October, uh, where we then transition to start planning for um, any sort of new housing um, uh, admits that will come in uh, for the spring semester.
Thank you. Um, I did see a question uh, regarding communications uh, to families. Um, and so if you're not already a member of the Turk Family eConnection portal, uh, that is how you will receive uh, important news and information uh, from the university, uh, um, information that is shared with students that we find helpful that uh, families should know about. We also share via the Turk Family eConnection portal. Um, so if you're not already a part of that, uh, I encourage you to join that. Uh, you can find the portal by going to my office's website, Family Engagement. Uh, our website is uh, terpfamily at umd.edu or dot umd.edu. So T-E-R-P family dot umd.edu. Um, and that's where you will be able to find that information. Uh, the next question um, is regarding residence halls that do not have air conditioning. Uh, can you share about how students uh, stay safe uh, in the heat and, and cool off? Oh, I think, Erin, are you jumping in on this one? Sure thing. Hey, everyone. Um, so for our unair conditioned buildings, it's a good idea to bring a fan for your residence hall room. Please do not bring any portable air conditioning units. They are not permitted in our residence halls, um, but you certainly are welcome to bring a fan. And I must say that in our unair conditioned buildings, they create community instantaneously. And that is because all of the students have their doors open um, when they're in the room to, to promote some cross ventilation. And all of the students, um, hang out in their floor lounges. Um, the lounges in um, our unair conditioned spaces do have AC, so that's where all the students congregate. So I will say those unair conditioned buildings, um, the community is on hyperglass from the beginning. So um, it's it's a good thing of being in an unair conditioned building. Thank you, Erin. I did have a question ready and, oh, there it is. Um, so bike storage, uh, can you share about the bike storage options for students who are coming to campus uh, with a bike? Sure, yeah. So um, there are a few different options. Part of that depends on where students are living. Uh, a few of our newer buildings on campus do have bike storage rooms that are directly built into those buildings. Those would be uh, such as uh, Oakland Hall. Uh, and I believe uh, we have at least one or two others that, that have bike storage inside. For the most part, students will actually um, use the bike racks, uh, most of those being covered around the residence hall areas uh, where they can uh, chain up their bikes there. Bikes in the room take up a lot of space, so I wouldn't recommend that so much. Uh, but one of the big things that I actually will recommend for students is if they're bringing a bike to campus, register that with our Department of Transportation Services. Um, there will be a couple of easy ways to get connected with them to register your bike. It's just so that if anything uh, were to happen on campus that the, the bike gets damaged or it gets misplaced, they can kind of help you uh, track down what you need uh, to recover that. So um, it's uh, just a good thing to have it registered with DOTS, uh, Transportation Services, uh, once you get to campus. But there's a lot of bike storage, a lot of bike racks all over campus, easy ways to get from your residence hall to class, lock up the bike, get back from class to the dining hall, back to your residence hall, and have somewhere to uh, store the bike in each location. Thanks, Dan. Uh, will there be uh, ADA accessible parking for all of the residence halls during move-in? take this one. Um, there are several accessible spaces near all of our residence halls. So if that is needed, we will have um, our University of Maryland Police Department helping to direct traffic, and we can direct you into one of those um, spaces as needed. Thank you. Uh, there was also a question about scooters. Um, and uh, students use scooters a lot around campus, um, and I most often see students uh, 
taking their scooters with them. Um, but I will let uh, resident life answer um, about whether students can take their scooters in their residence halls with them. So for that, the answer is no. Uh, there are um, fire safety issues with the, the batteries and the, the uh, management of uh, electric scooters. A, like simple Razor scooter is a different situation, but an electric scooter cannot be stored inside the buildings. Um, so kind of a similar situation. There are spaces you can connect with transportation services uh, for additional information about um, scooter options around campus. I will highlight that there is a, a program here uh, where students can rent scooters. They're all over the campus uh, via ride. Um, so we have a lot of our students here on campus will take advantage of that service to get from one place to another uh, with the convenience of just using one of the quick rental scooters uh, that are all over the campus here. Um, but just to be clear, no storage of electric scooters directly in the buildings. Great, thank you. Um, Many of these questions are already being responded to. Um, for the microwave and refrigerator rental, uh, when would those be delivered? Um, and can they purchase them day of or after moving? I'll jump in on that one too. Um, I uh, talk about the vendor stuff all the time during orientation. so. Um, for the rentals, it's definitely uh, um, a good idea to go ahead and get those submissions in within the next few days here, just to guarantee that the company will be able to deliver it ahead of time. The idea is if you uh, do place your order for the rental within the next several days, uh, the company will deliver your refrigerator or micro fridge to, directly to the room prior to your arrival. That way you don't even have to think about it. It'll just be in the room. Uh, when you and your student uh, show up here on campus. The vendors will be on site um, on the move-in days. So there is an opportunity to connect with them, to potentially put in an order later. They may or may not be able to actually deliver the refrigerator, refrigerator or micro fridge during that time, just kind of thinking about the campus traffic and um, management of stock and all that type of stuff. But they'll be able to schedule something to come back at another time um, if they're not able to do it on the day. So. Um, I definitely recommend if you're interested in it, check out the website, myfridgerental.com, look at the details there. Um, one of the big changes this year is that the micro fridges are allowed in all of our residence halls. Um, so there's a, a thing about the way that they're structured. We've tested them in all of our buildings. While we don't necessarily allow standalone microwaves in every building, um, there's a electrical wattage element to the, the way that these micro fridges operate that makes them safe to use in all of our residence halls. So um, it is an option to consider. Um, if your student just gets a regular mini fridge and uh, their building doesn't allow for individual microwaves, just know that there are microwaves in centrally uh, located uh, spaces within the buildings, typically in the lounges, potentially in a lobby kitchen space, um, but there's access to those resources available for students in those common areas. Thank you. Um, can you share about the um, internet, Wi-Fi, TV, cable streaming options that are available in the residence halls? Hello again. Um, so in terms of uh, access to all of the, the data and all, uh, all those different elements, uh, specifically for cable, we've moved away from a coaxial cable hookup directly into the wall, and students just stream directly through Xfinity on campus. Um, so they, once they're connected to our internet here on campus, they can um, also register to be able to access the streaming service uh, provided by Xfinity. So that's typically how students like to get connected anyway. They're watching a lot of stuff on their mobile devices, on their laptops. Um, so um, we've moved in that direction, or smart TVs also can connect to that too. Um, once the student's connected to the Wi-Fi and, and, um, and the internet, they're able to um, connect to all of those things. Now in the residence halls, we provide both wired and wireless internet. Um, so you can plug directly into the wall. Um, I would argue that that sometimes is a slightly more stable connection. Our Wi-Fi is uh, really good on campus. 
But if a student's going to be in the room for a long time, it doesn't hurt to plug directly in the wall if your device connects that way as well. So um, just something to consider there. Uh, students will uh, get, if uh, they didn't get a, uh, specific details about connecting to the network during their orientation, uh, we'll have resources for them uh, once they get to campus to help them get connected. Uh, but they, they'll be able to easily access Wi-Fi all over the campus. I think that captured all the connectivity elements, hopefully. It did. Perfect. Um, the next question, do most students bring a printer with them? I'd argue no. Um, I, I don't see a whole bunch of printers anymore. Occasionally, we actually do a, um, a donation drive at the end of the year where we collect items for um, a program called Terps Move Out Donation Drive, and it helps support uh, our Terp to Terp Campus Restore. We've seen some of those types of items end up there um, because students really aren't using their own personal printers as much anymore. There are services all over campus, uh, particularly connected with our libraries. Um, so students will do printing that way. Printing is also not necessarily as um, significant now as it was potentially several years ago, as so much is managed more digitally, that uh, students don't have to worry so much about printing. Um, but there are central stations all over campus, uh, centralized stations all over campus that they can connect with and print whatever they need to print. Thank you. Um... If for some reason students uh, need to arrive after 4 p.m., um, what is the process for them to be able to check in to their residence hall? I can take that 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 question, Erin. I saw you unmute. Um, the process for after 4 p.m. is again on the arrival passport. You'll see your um, unloading zone in the area to arrive. You would just go to that service desk. We want our service desks are 24/7, and so um, the staff there will be able to help and give you the key that would then um, allow you to get into the room. Uh, the yellow cards that were mentioned earlier, they should be available. Um, and after 4 p.m., you can um, rent out a cart, you get your key and move straight into your room. So while the, while the, staff, um, the staff support may be a little less, we do have staff on hand to make sure that you have access and the ability to move in items um, from the curbside into your room. Thank you. And I see we're at 7.58. So I'm going to ask this one last question. Um, I see there are um, Resident Life folks still responding to questions um, in the Q&A. Uh, but uh, after I ask this question, if there are any that uh, you want to uh, read aloud for the group to answer, um, that would be the time. Uh, so the the next question I'm going to ask is, uh, are there filtered water stations or fountains available in the uh, residence hall buildings uh, for students to refill their, their containers? Yes, there are in many of the residence halls. Um, the location just varies by hall, but for the most part, um, in our traditional buildings, you'll find them in our lobby areas um, and at least one per floor. Thank you. Um, I, I have to ask this one last question because I get asked this a lot as well. Um, is there someone who will come in and clean the residents uh, regularly or is it up to the student to clean their rooms themselves? Yes, good question. So in our community bathrooms, um, they are cleaned on a, on a daily basis on Monday through Friday. They're cleaned um, by our housekeeping staff with the Department of Residential Facilities. And then on the weekends in our community bathrooms, it's more of a touch up and restocking as needed on Saturday and Sunday. Um, for our semi suites, suites and apartments, the residents of that space are responsible for cleaning their own bathrooms, um, shared space, and um, in our apartments, their kitchen space. Thank you, Erin. Um, now I'll open it up to resident life staff. Are there any questions that came through? Um, I see you all have been working very well in responding to these questions. We already have 158 answered or responded to, so that's awesome. Um, but are there any questions that uh, you wanted to respond to live that I did not get to? 
Yeah, I think one I'll jump in real, with real quick, because I've seen a, a couple questions related to it, is just to explain the bed lofts a little bit differently. Um, so we work with a vendor, bedloft.com, and if a student uh, were to reserve a bed loft for their room ahead of time, um, first of all, the company will come in and install it. So that's that's a big thing. You don't have to worry about an installation later after you and your student have already moved in and all the stuff is there and you have to move things around if you kind of decide on, on the lofting element later. Um, the loft company will come in if you uh, pre-order it within the next several days. Um, but what a loft does is essentially raises the bed to bunk bed level height as far as um, the student would be sleeping then on what would be considered the top bunk. And then that opens up a lot of space underneath so that you can slide a dresser under there. You could fit um, the desk, maybe with or without the hutch, depending on the way that the, the furniture is um, organized for that particular room. Um, or if you have like a beanbag chair or a small futon or something like that that you bring with you, that's totally fine. Uh, it creates that extra floor space to be able to have a little bit more customization of the room. You're not required to get a bed loft, just to be clear. Um, but if you're, you and your student are interested in it, um, check out that website and um, see what the options are. Not every building actually is um, uh, built for the bed lofts to work with the way that the rooms are situated. So the website will clarify based on your student's housing location, whether or not a bed loft is allowed. You don't, uh, if you wanna look for a little bit of additional height, you don't have to go to the level of a bed loft. You could just go to one of the department stores um, Target, Walmart, something like that, and pick up bed risers. Um, our beds are square bottoms uh, as far as the shape of the actual bed posts. So it's good to make sure that if you are buying bed risers, typically gives uh, a bed about an additional um, eight inches to, to a foot off the ground from what its standard setting is, um, that you, you know, make sure you find ones that match the furniture there, just the, as, as far as the shape of the bed post. So students could look at that as an option too, if they're just trying to raise the bed a little bit um, so that they can have a little bit more under the bed storage. So there are a couple of different options you can play with. Thank you. Um, I'll ask this one last one because I haven't been asked it before, but it is a good question. Um, if there is a, a better phone provider in the area, um, I know I'm with Verizon, but I know there's not like Verizon isn't good everywhere. So Res Life folks, do you all have any recommendations that you all know work work better on campus for students? I was gonna say I don't necessarily have a recommendation, but I will add, Danny, I have um T Mobile that works pretty good. I believe Verizon works well. Um Dan or Aaron, I'm not sure if you have different from Danielle or I, but I can tell you T-Mobile works fine. Yeah, I've got AT&T. It works fine. Um, I actually can receive phone calls. Like my office is in the basement of our uh, office building here, and I can receive phone calls down here with AT&T. So I'm going to say that that's pretty decent. Um, but I, I think it's with any phone company, their service is variable wherever you are. So I don't know that there's one service that's necessarily better than any other. Sure. Yeah. Um, great. Well, thank you, everyone. We are uh, going to wrap up. Um, I know there's some folks still responding to questions uh, in the Q&A, so uh, we'll have some time for those to be finished. Um, but I do want to thank you all for taking the time to join us this evening. Uh, contact, info for resident, contact information for resident life uh, is on this last slide. So if you do have any remaining questions uh, or wish to follow up on any of the information you received tonight, uh, please feel free to reach out to their office. You're also welcome to reach out to my office and I can help uh, to answer any questions that I'm able to. Uh, lastly, as I bring this to a close, I do wanna remind everyone that a recording of this webinar will be available uh, on the Turk Family YouTube channel tomorrow. Uh, so uh, in the email that I send you all because you all attended tonight, um, I will be able to uh, email that information to you, uh, but you can also go onto YouTube, type in Terp Family, and you'll be able to find our channel with all of our uh, previous recordings. Um, with the email that I send you, I will include many of the links that were shared tonight, uh, and I will also include a survey 
uh, in there. So please provide your feedback. Let us know how we did, how we can improve. Um, and if there's any other topics that you wish to learn about, uh, definitely let me know. I thoroughly enjoy uh, collaborating on these with my campus partners. And so um, definitely give me some, some topics and other resources that you want to learn more about. Uh, we definitely welcome your thoughts about the webinar uh, this evening. Um, so thank you again for joining us, and I hope you all have a wonderful rest of your day. Thanks so much, everyone.